You're listening to the Modern Healthcare Back Office, a podcast dedicated to solving the billing issues and gridlock facing the healthcare industry, presented by ProChant, hosted by Chuck Ellis and Rachel Schools. Well, hey there, folks. Chuck here, and welcome to another issue of the Modern Healthcare Back Office. I am joined, as always, by my amazing co-host, Ms. Rachel Schools. How are you, Rachel? I am amazing, Chuck. How are you? I am also amazing. We are gearing up for the 2023 season, and we've got a lot of really cool stuff in store, both in the form of some live webinars coming up, as well as some more great episodes. And we've got some guests that will be coming on the show soon that we're really excited about. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell if you're watching us on YouTube, or visit Protea.com and fill out the newsletter link so you can stay apprised of the situation. But Rachel, I wanted to talk to you today about something that's been on my mind. I had a listener uh, tell us recently that uh, she gets a lot of her education from both the content on our blog page and this podcast, which is very flattering to hear. Uh, It also kind of speaks to the, I won't say lack of information out there, but the... um, the need, the spontaneous need sometimes to learn the back office processes and the revenue cycle management that's out there because of necessity rather than because this is your line of work. And with all the staffing issues that we are facing since 2020, people are having to become more adaptable and take on roles that they were not expecting to take on. And they're having to learn by doing. We wanted to take this episode and do a little bit of a, a revenue cycle management 101. And this will be great for me because I am relatively new to the process myself coming from marketing and advertising background. And Rachel is a literal expert, a literal consultant. Little, You've forgotten more about revenue cycle management than most people will <laughs> ever know. Yes. And uh, so I'm going to be playing the role of somebody who works for a uh, mid to large size, uh, either home-based care, healthcare business or infusion pharmacy or uh, someone- Or mental in, health or, or mental whatever. Health. I'm whatever. playing the role of somebody who has been dropped into this process and doesn't know the first thing about this. So it's me doing what I do best and Rachel doing what she does best. And that is teaching me the things that I should probably know. So Rachel, I have been- working for my business, doing the business running side of things. And all of a sudden I'm dunked into this world of RCM and back office. So start with the very basics. What is the back office? What is the back office or what is the revenue cycle? Yeah, absolutely. What am I doing here? I'm scared. so, uh, So first of all, let's talk about our setting in healthcare. What is the revenue cycle? It is the cycle that a patient essentially goes through. Okay. So think about in the healthcare world, who's the customer here? It's always the patient, right? Patients getting something. Something might be something physical, right? They might get a wheelchair because they just left the doctor's office and they broke their foot. So perhaps we're getting a wheelchair. Uh, We might be getting something like a CPAP machine because we just had a sleep study done um, <clears throat> and we found out that we have sleep apnea. Or maybe we just need to go to the doctor because we're sniffling like I am right now and maybe I need some antibiotics. But the revenue cycle begins with how you capture that referral, right? Mm-hmm. So think about the revenue cycle. There's got to be a beginning of it. In some way, shape, or form, you, the provider, have just been made aware that you need to provide a something to this patient, right? Now, it doesn't matter what industry that you're in. What's the first thing you would think you would need to do in that process? What's the very first thing? You need to put an itemized report. You need to account for that patient's activity, right? Well, exactly. So you just told me the first step of the reg- revenue cycle. It's registration. So the first thing that you do in the revenue cycle is you capture the patient's sync demographic information. So your first name, your last name, your date of birth, those types of basic demographic, uh, key basic demographic elements. 
And then you're going to figure out next who's paying for this. So first, Indeed. so the first step in the revenue cycle is going to be registration. So you put in your demographic information. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to figure out who's paying for it and what are you asking to be paid for? It. So if registration is the first step in the revenue cycle, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to verify eligibility benefits and we're going to see hey, who is going to be paying us for this product, this service, this whatever it is that we're providing. <laughs> Clear as so, mud so far? Yeah, absolutely. So I am I am registering the person. I I am starting the process of I think we've all had to deal with this at some point in our adult lives, figuring out who pays for what and what's the health care cover, etc. Here's the fun part. So no longer is it just like, okay, let me put the patient in, let me put their insurance in. Yes, Chuck, you definitely have Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? I can right. see that you have Blue Cross Blue Shield. I can clearly see that you, Chuck, are responsible for 20% of approved charges where your insurer is responsible for 80%. But there's another game we have to play here, too. Do you, patient, have insurance? And is that insurance active? And how much will you owe? But now we have another game that we have to play in the revenue cycle, which is what requirements am I going to have to meet in order for you to have this service approved, Chuck, what rules might be in place? So let's use the CPAP example, all right? So you went and got a sleep study, Chuck. I'm just making this up for you, right? Let's mm -hmm. pretend you, you went, you had a sleep study done. You find out that you have sleep apnea. Um, you have Blue Cross. You're going to come to durable medical equipment provider's office and you're going to try to get set up for a CPAP. So not only do we have to have your name and your insurance information, and not only do we have to make sure that it's valid and active, now we have to go through a checklist of about 10 things and we've got to make sure that we have a copy of your sleep study, that within the very specific requirements were met in terms of your um, apnea, hypopnea index, and things like that. Right? have to go through and make sure that you actually qualify in order to receive this. And not only do we have to make sure of that, we've got to make sure that we're staying organized enough as we move through our revenue cycle that we can quickly turn these documents around and get them over to that insurance company should they ask for it. Because if we don't have all of that stuff together, guess what? Hmm. We're not going to get paid. That's true. Yeah. So I'm, I imagine the insurance company is looking for any excuse to not pay. And then the patient is also going, but wait, I thought this was covered by my insurance. Exactly. You're exactly right. So this cycle is getting murky here. It's getting we haven't done anything yet. We haven't even, yeah, exactly. We still haven't actually done anything yet, right? We're still just in the preliminary planning phase of possibly we're going to provide some service or possibly we're going to provide some product. So at this point in the game, actually there's an order that's going to be floating around some software system, right? So the patient might have been entered and in some way, shape or form, there's some, call it an order, call it a service ticket, call it an appointment, call it a visit whatever you want to call it, there's some thing floating around in this software system somewhere, and it's in an incomplete state. So that incomplete state might be we're still waiting to verify benefits. Maybe we're waiting on a prior authorization, which is another step in the revenue cycle. That's the one I was just talking about where we make sure that you qualify. Uh, once we get through all of those things, then we actually provide the service or we provide the product or the appointment happens, right? So all of those, those things are in place and now we're ready to actually execute and either provide a service, finish out an appointment or provide you with a product. Now, this is where the next part of the revenue cycle kicks in because once that thing is done, now we have to get that claim transmitted to the insurance company. So that might be electronically. I hope it's electronically. The year is <laughs> almost 2023. If anybody is still sending claims on paper, 
We need to talk about that. Yes. We have a whole episode <laughs> about that almost. Yeah. We have a whole 20, probably 20 yeah. episodes on it at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need to talk about that if you're still doing too much on paper. Uh, but once the once the thing happens, then it's time to transmit the claim. This is another sort of stop in the revenue cycle. We refer to this commonly as billing. It's where we make sure that the claim goes from our system to the payer. We make sure that there are not any rejections against that claim, right? We want to make sure that we see that claim leave our system and that we get some sort of a response back from the payer acknowledging that they received this claim. Now, with most insurance companies, we're still in the revenue cycle, right? The claim transmitted. Now here comes the fun part. Now we, we wait for uh, from one week to three weeks to see what's going to happen with that claim. Now, one of, one of three things are going to happen in the revenue cycle, right? To transmit that claim, you're going to get a payment back. You're okay. going to transmit the claim and you're going to get a denial of the Less claim. Ideal. Or this is the worst. This is like the worst. You're going to transmit the claim and you're going to see nothing. Oh, no. No payment. No denial. Oh, dear. All right. So this is where <clears throat> if you get a denial, it's great. Easy enough. Most of us that have been working in healthcare revenue cycle management for a while, we don't shy away from a denial. A denial is not a bad thing. A denial is simply telling you, this is why you didn't get paid. In cases, you can go and Google what you need to do to get paid. So uh, I remember one time a teacher told me we wouldn't have a calculator available and we <laughs> needed to remember, <laughs> need to remember how to do certain things. That's not true. Almost everybody has a calculator available, but also everybody has the whole internet at their fingertips where you can literally Google almost any non-payment scenario you can think There has a whole website you can go to where you can plug in these denial codes and these remark codes, and it literally will tell you this is what's wrong. Denial's not bad, right? With a denial, you just need to get accustomed to your denials and how to turn those around. Um, the claims that are not responded to, those are the worst, right? Because you probably, it's not, it's you don't probably, know what to do next. <laughs> you don't know what to do next. And that means that you're going to have to do the thing that we don't like to do as at all as elder millennials or Gen Z. Oh no, you're going to make us pick up the phone, aren't you? You knew it. Good job. Oh. It's the worst. It's the worst, right? Because if you don't get a response, it does mean this is, I do not pick up the phone right away. Let me be completely honest. The first thing I'm going to go to a website and I'm going to sure. see if that payer has a website and I'm going to see if I can log in and check the status of that claim on that website and or because not only can you check the status online, you can also inquire about it online. That's my go-to, sure. right? But let's say that I find that there is not a website for that payer or I can't get into it. I do have to pick up the telephone. That is absolutely the, the worst case scenario. You've got to pick up the phone and figure out why in the world this claim wasn't paid and then get that resolved. And yeah. the whole game in the revenue cycle is to make it from registration to the claim is completely closed and paid and zeroed out minimal touches as possible. That's sense. it. And when we say back office, uh, what, what are we, what do we mean? Like the difference between a back office and a front office. So to me, office is just anything where you're literally sitting face to face with a patient. Okay. So that's the registration and intake and. But maybe because that could also be back office. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Because if somebody checked in online, like my, my wife, we're about to have our second child and. She just tried doing the online registration at the hospital. Uh, it ended up taking almost two hours, actually, because she and she ended up having to pick up the phone because because the online check in didn't work. So it went from a back office process to a front office Correct. process, where ironically, the person that she ended up on the phone with just walked her through the back office process <laughs> because there was uh, there was an internal issue with the registration that it was a known issue. And they were like, I'll, we'll walk you through it. And then at this point, we take over. Yes. And uh, which, yeah, that's nuts. That's two hours that she had to do that. 
So back office then is anything where you're not having to directly interact with the patient. And even though you just told me of a little bit of a nightmare scenario where that, sure. that didn't work, if you think about it, um, our world is so changed, right? Over the weekend, I know you can hear I sort of cold. Everybody came down with something over Thanksgiving. Everybody's sick. Um, yeah. We all went to the doctor, but we never left my house. And I did all of my own registration, right? On Online, right? I went, I put in all of my information. I uploaded okay. my, yeah. my card. And but, so I'm doing my own back office work. But there are some like that, right, in this day and age where a patient can sort of something off and somebody on the back end can take it to the next level, but still without ever having to interact with anybody. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's this line that's been crossed of what's front office, what's back office, because you were going down the right path before where you said, so registration is front office. And I wanted to say, yeah, but not always, but not always. Yeah. So how do you feel about the revenue cycle? What's the revenue cycle, Chuck? Revenue cycle, it sounds to me like it is basically the entire soup to nuts of a patient coming to you in need of care and the process of registering, ensuring that the insurance is properly documented, getting in touch with the insurance company to see what they'll pay and what the patient needs to pay, and uh, following that through all the way to collection. That's right. So it's you're, exactly it's reg eligibility verification, prior authorization, delivery, execution, whatever you want to call it, the thing where we do, then it's billing or transmitting the claim, following up on the claim if it's not paid and or posting the payment when it is right. And then there's some reports, some standard okay. KPIs and reports that you keep your eye on and keep in mind here with revenue cycle. The whole goal is, uh, what do we want to call it? Zero, zero adjudication days, which means our goal is to never have to touch that claim again <laughs> beyond right. when we confirm that we did the thing, right? So anytime you get denied, if you want to keep your revenue cycle nice and clean, all you got to do is figure out how to never get denied again. So simple. So simple. It is. But the entire process itself gets a lot more complicated because, like you said, there are issues ranging from everything from people's technical services not talking to each other or functioning like it should to people who are still using paper to uh, just computers that don't want to talk to each other. Think or, about it. Yeah. Think about the rules that have to be in place electronically for the... Chuck, your are data science -y. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm data science adjacent, yes. Yes. So you... Think about all the rules that have to be in place back and forth. When you send a claim to an insurance company, it's usually a combination of four to five letters and then a couple of other letters that tell you, like, we call those modifiers, right? Mm -hmm. That insurance company has to understand this entire language. And if one little thing is messed up in their system, just one setting, one whatever, yeah, you're in trouble. Right. You're going to have to call them, get in touch with their tech team and say, hey, I'm reading your policy and it says this is correct. Yet your processing system is messing this up. Sometimes you get into policy questions and sometimes you got to be a tech, tech, you call it tech geek, right? Yeah. You got to be tech support <laughs> exactly. when we're doing claims billing. So revenue cycle is fun. Yeah. So. Once I've graduated from Revenue Cycle 101, where should I turn for 102 or 201? It's what, where do people go to, to learn more about this stuff? Besides, of course, listening to the Modern Healthcare Back Office. I was going to say, following our blog. you can find us on LinkedIn. Absolutely. So you can find us on LinkedIn. Rachel School's on LinkedIn. Chuck Ellis on LinkedIn. Your website, Prochant.com. I think on almost every page, there is a contact us link. And then we've also... On our web page, I believe we've got every cast, white paper you could think of. It's on our, on our web website. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, again, thank you everyone so much for listening. I hope this was helpful for those of you who are getting thrown into the RCM world and are dipping your toe in and a little nervous about 
what all that implies and what does this uh, acronym that we throw around so often mean. And hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, if you've got some comments on this, please leave it in the section below this video. If you're watching it on YouTube or uh, email me at Chuck. Uh, what is it? <laughs> I know my email address. Chuck.ellis at Prochant.com. Uh, it's weird because everybody else's is like Yours Rachel is S. not, uh, yes. Mine, mine doesn't follow the regular format. I guess they changed it somewhere along the way. Well, mine is but, Rachel S. at Prochant.com. Yeah, so yeah. hit us up and I'd uh, love to hear from you. Uh, as always, thanks for listening, subscribing, wherever you are. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That really helps with the visibility of the show. And uh, you hear an episode that you think is going to be helpful for a colleague, please pass it along. As always, we appreciate you listening. We'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Modern Healthcare Back Office, a presentation of ProChant, a wholly owned revenue cycle management service dedicated to serving HME, pharmacy infusion, and other healthcare providers. Learn more about us at ProChant.com.